so I guess we're ready to begin our final thoughts. So we have now, I guess to iron this out for the iron final thoughts, excuse me, uh, video. We've beaten the game twice, once on normal, once on hard. We played as all six characters. We've technically seen the story from the SNES for the other set of characters we didn't play as. So we've technically seen all the bosses between the different versions. And I don't know. My opinion towards the game is really mixed, even having gone through it twice. It's not a very long game. We beat it in 16 to 18 hours with all cutscenes, no boss knowledge, no super exploitive things, no understanding of the class mechanics, not really looking anything up. So it's not like a terribly long game from like an action standpoint. I guess if I were to start and eventually form an opinion, which I think I actually need to think about whether I'd recommend the game or not, surprisingly. Uh, I think from the positives, we're listening to the big biggest positive in the game. The remix of the soundtrack is really good, actually. So it definitely helps set the tone of the game. I cannot say the same for the new additions of the game itself. So where the game starts to have big problems is no matter what character you choose, which I will say it's nice that they give some descriptions as to what they do, which is an improvement over the SNES version. The cutscenes and the voice acting. Oh my gosh, the cutscenes and the voice acting. Some of the people can act. Um, I, I don't know what percentage of that is specifically, maybe 40%. There are some bad voices in this game. It it harkens back to like an early 90s dub. Even some of the even the protagonists, like two of them are just outright terrible. A third one is very questionable and calling the other ones amazing is kind of a stretch. So even from like a main cast standpoint, it's very weak overall. I thought it was interesting that there were some side characters that I think completely upstaged uh, most of the voice acting, weirdly. Like, I think Fairy, for example, was a character that upstaged basically everybody. Uh, another good example, Crimson Wizard was okay, but, uh, ooh, chat can correct me on this character's name, I forget offhand. It is, uh, Hawkeye's friend. Right in the beginning of the game. He actually was a good voice actor, but a lot of the characters in the game are just, ooh... Just, ooh, eagle, thank you. Yeah, a lot of these felt like really awkward first takes. And like, you'll hear it not in every cutscene, but maybe like every eight or nine cutscenes. The sound balancing is just wrong. I, like, I really, like, it feels very amateurish. Like, it's, the dialogue is not any different than the Switch, um translation for Trials of Mana. So we don't have expectations for like the original version versus the Nintendo official versus whatever. But like some of the, some of the lines were just so weird. They had like awkward pauses or they were like really quiet. Like one, a couple of times Fairy cried out. She's like, "Oh no, look out, they're coming there." And then the villain goes, "And I am here." And that's like the like the volume and like intensity difference. Where it's like, did they did they forget to record in the, the same booth or something? What happened for some of these things? So to me, I just find it kind of hard to picture this as like a game that came out in 2020. Like if I had been witnessing this, I would have said this would have been before a lot of what I consider kind of like exemplary action RPG games like East Lacrimosa of Donna or the really smooth combat of Monstrum Nox. Both of those came out before Trials of Mana. We double checked in our playthrough and we're like, wow, it is kind of like a night and day difference in terms of uh, quality of the voice acting as well as uh, combat feel. And I think that's where this game kind of, it, it fixes some things, but it introduces problems. And this is where I, it's like kind of hard for me to make a recommendation specifically on it. So like, it, I'm going to compare it briefly against the SNES because they tried to base as much as possible from that version of the game. It's very clear that's their intent, and some of it translated well, some of the fi fixes did not work well. Uh, so let's talk about uh, things that were added that worked. Let's split it into categories. I like that they introduced something that you can hunt in most of the dungeons, whether it's little cactus, 
to get small upgrades until the end of the game where arguably that ability is really overpowered and probably shouldn't be in the game um they had more treasures that was a big problem in the older version of the game there is basically a million dead ends and barely any treasure chests so they introduced different levels of rarity of chests which is kind of nice some of the dungeons have been redesigned and that's more of a mixed bag generally speaking i guess they're fine we'll hold off on the negatives of the dungeons in a little bit but I think for the most part, you know, they tried to add some stuff that worked okay, like some verticality to the stages, I think for the most part was fine. They tried to make classes more important, which was a major mechanic of mana. So instead of just having like this concept of like single attack and class strike, which is the SNES version, this one allows to do, you know, like uh, basically like square triangle combos where it, X number of square inputs before triangle determines what your power attack does. So the equivalency is like you could do a quick stun, you could do an AOE, you could do a super damaging move based off of two presses of light attack into power, three presses, four presses, etc. And I think the concept of that is fine. It's just, it felt a little basic. And for some people that might not be a problem, some people might look that as a positive, at least compared to the SNES. For me, I was kind of hoping for something more, so I was left a little unsatisfied with how some of the things were implemented. I like that there were possibly unintended mechanics with the combat, where if you can lock them in a very long class strike animation uh, and quickly swap out, you can do like big combo damage on them while they're locked by the class strike. I don't honestly know if that's intended it feels like it's not but it did make the combat a bit more fun when we discovered that i think from the standpoint of like spell casting and trying to do some east of some of the menu horrors that were in the snes game i think generally they did a good job there there's a couple abilities that don't seem to do what they state which is a bit unfortunate we saw that i think earlier with the passive health regen one that was meant to do mp according to the dialogue of text so there's some things that are still a little off even in the new version of the game i generally like the idea of what they tried to do with the classes to make them a bigger stat boost immediately and for you to assign stat points that go towards unlocking abilities i like the concept for the most part there's a couple characters i think they didn't do it very well on and it felt kind of bad if you wanted to do them compared to the SNES version. I think the easiest example I can name is Angela, who is like kind of like the titular witch slash sorceress, who potentially needs to put points in strength and stamina in order to learn some of the spells, which to some extent I think did exist in the SNES version, but honestly would have liked for that to not have existed in the remake, to be honest. So it's a little unfortunate because it doesn't really make sense to focus strength on a completely int based character. So there's a couple of weird oddities from them trying to like keep the core of the original system in there. Um, I like that as you put those bonus points in like you did in the SNES version, they unlock additional passive abilities at certain levels. So for example, if you put in nine points of strength, you might get an additional five strength, or you might do something like power attacks do 10% more damage, or you heal slightly more, or summons cost less MP, or you gain more class strike due in certain things. And I think that for the most part was done very well. I almost said a negative. <laughs> I, I had to catch myself. We'll, we'll hold up for the negatives. Um, let's see, what else did I think was a positive from the game? They... Sped up... Overworld movement, I guess? That was nice. But yeah, I'm kind of struggling to think of more positive things. So let, let's go to the, the mixed bag territory. Mixed bag. As you level up with your classes they kind of break the game really hard and the game is already not super hard to begin with so even on even on like normal and hard most of the struggle comes from something we're going to go in big detail when we complain about the game but i even feel from like just a difficulty standpoint the act of unlocking new class strikes and the ability to just have more passives 
leads to like insane power creep compared to the original so we literally on the last playthrough on hard mode killed like the final post-game boss in like 20 spell casts and the fight was over and the spell casts are fast so like in about a minute real time the boss was dead and we didn't have to do anything else so there's definitely some weird character imbalances and you know granted it is like a single player game balance doesn't have to be like the end all be all but there are some very clearly overpowered abilities that if you're looking for the game to be as hard as it is before the class upgrades because i think the game is like about right on hard mode in the beginning maybe like a little too hard on two bosses in particular for newer players it just kind of becomes very one-sided by the time you get all the upgrades. And I think in particular with the post-game content, which I feel is sadly like 99% padding, it doesn't really add to the story in a great way. A lot of it is very clunky dialogue. And while I enjoy having more of an excuse to play more content, which is the plus side, the downside is that the dungeon design kind of sucks. So it's a mixed bag. I mean, if you just really want to have like a power fantasy, maybe that'll be more of a positive than a mixed. But I know for me, it felt like, wow, the difficulty fell off the, fell off an absolute cliff. <laughs> the closer you got to the end of the game, the more lopsided it was, like even more so than in most action RPG games. Um, I think a mixed bag is that air combat, while interesting to potentially like knock targets out of the air, doesn't really have a lot of like good supporting characteristics with it. So what I mean by that is a lot of games that have air combat either have things like air dashes or double jumps or some way to do skills in the air. And this game only just has like jump, two weak attacks, power attack, and that's it. So if you're looking for like them to take advantage of the 3Dness of the game, it barely comes up. And if you're spell casting, it doesn't come up at all. You don't even need to interact with that system at all. So I think that's the mixed bag of things. I guess we'll talk about the bad, and if I feel I need to categorize something later, we'll touch about it. The bad. Um, I would say for the most part, a lot of the challenge from bosses comes from them removing the absolute silly nonsense of the SNES full screen death attack and replacing it with a mechanic where you can hit different points. Like the boss is charging a spell on an altar, you have to hit the altar, or there's four beams of light channeling from crystals, and if you interrupt the crystals, it stops the attack. It's good in theory. The problem is that the number one thing that really drags this game down for me and makes it like a hard recommend, the AI. The AI is so damn bad. It is it is so atrocious. It is arguably, I think, the worst we have ever seen on stream. It's probably bottom five AI I have seen in any game off stream. It is hilariously terrible. I think they tried to add more strategy controls, which was a positive, where you get to dictate how often they class strike or how much MP they use or how many items they consume. But man, they are just so damn dumb. Like, it is just outrageous how bad they are in certain bo boss fights. Like, they're okay in normal fights. They're still not gonna dodge more than like 10% of the time unless you tell them to play ultra defensive. And then like, what is the point? Because they're not gonna damage, it just becomes a solo game anyway. So if you want them like anywhere vaguely in the average aggression territory, they're basically not going to dodge anything ever, and that is such a bad feeling as a player, especially when you're fighting some of the potentially mechanically more interesting bosses. They just have no idea how to interact with bosses. Like, it's very clear that they go, I'm in X distance, I use this move. Like, that is their mentality. That's as complicated as it gets. They don't prioritize well. They don't understand weaknesses for the most part. They don't understand where to hit most bosses. Any multi-part boss, you might as well as just like, if you expect them to do damage, 
take that thought, crumple it in a ball, throw it in the trash can. They don't know how to hit those bosses. Oh, is the boss weakness in the air and you have to jump attack to hit it? They're never doing it. Oh, does the boss weakness get exposed briefly after it doesn't attack? There's no way they're hitting it. They're going to hit the boss's leg or something stupid. So they are really annoying to babysit. It's a little less bad if they're spell casting and they have some healing, but they just have absolutely no idea how to dodge attacks. And they do give indicators to dodge strikes, which I feel a little mixed on, leaning more towards a bad thing. Um, but the problem is, like, the AI doesn't react to it more than 80% of the time. There's a couple of bosses where somehow they react almost every time. And then other bosses, they will see, like, an 8-second charge and refuse the dodge. Like, it is really frustrating, I would say from like a game game feel perspective. And for me, that really bothered me when we played this game, especially before you get your first set of class upgrades where you get stat boosts and you get more extended max stats and you get new class strikes or potentially unlocking new upgraded versions of spells, depending on your character. They just kind of eat all your items and die repeatedly. Like, eventually you'll get to a point where the new mechanics of Little Cactus giving, like, double, like, triple XP or having more items to sell in general because there's more to find in dungeons or even the fact that treasures are more common in the game to drop compared to the SNES version, you'll end up with enough money that it will slowly not be a problem. But the first, like, five to six hours of the game are really dragged down before the first upgrade where all they do is take it in the face and die. They don't have like the gear, they don't have the stats. And unless you really want to dedicate yourself to grinding out a class upgrade before a somewhat big difficulty spike, it just means that you can't rely on them for buffs to be buffed or for them to properly debuff or do most things. And I think a lot of it stems from a lot of game design decisions that just seem to ignore like literally decades of progress, which I understand it's a remake of an SNES game, but if you're going to bring it up at least to like a minimum level of Dynasty Warriors, like an ongoing long series involving similar combos, could you at least give them like some chance of survival in these things? Like we don't really want to see what some of the hardest difficulties are given that they already don't really dodge that often. And granted, as you get towards the end of the game, it matters a little less, but the journey there did not need to be that perilous because they are just so dumb and unable to do anything. So I think if you go in knowing that they are just unreliable damage sources, at best they're basically heal spam bots and you'll probably baby beast at them. Maybe you'll have more fun with it. Maybe? Question mark? I don't know. I think from that standpoint, you know, unfortunately combat is like 70% of the game and they end up making the boss fights kind of a drag. And I think depending on your difficulty, I think your enjoyment will vary. Normal we felt was definitely way too easy and hard mode was also still pretty easy with the exception that there are certain bosses that can now one-shot you due to the dependency of interrupting the boss by destroying those pillars or altars or whatever it is to charge up the super attack. So it's kind of unfortunate. Like, if you're playing a really solid melee character, you could kind of get around it. But man, you just not count on them to interact with any of the game's mechanics, which gets kind of annoying. Like, it would have been cool if they, you know, if you went on the left side, they were covering the far side, and, you know, together you interrupt the boss attack. Like, that's how it should have worked, but they didn't program it like that. So they just kind of derp out, hit the boss, do no damage, ignore the fact that there's some massive attack that's about to kill you. And a lot of the time it adds a really unnecessary artificial difficulty where you just end up soloing a part of the boss for no reason, even though your characters are alive. And they those things may or may not take damage from spells. So it's better to just melee them. Just kind of unfortunate. I think one thing I'm very kind of mixed to negative on, I don't like the look of the game. Like they did upgrade it from like pixel to 3D. And I feel like a lot of it feels kind of on the cheaper end, especially on the animations. We saw some weird things where like th they have constant artifacts clipping into each other. 
Um, we could see a couple cutscenes where AI's feet were placed too low, and they were, like, actually in the ground instead of on top of the ground. And there's just some moments where the character models are not, like, crazy expressive for, like, the simplistic style, so it could kind of take you out of it more often than not, which is a bit unfortunate. I'm trying to think if there's any other general negatives before we go into spoilers. Um, as I said before, combat is kind of a big negative, unfortunately, and it's a very combat-based game. The plot itself is not really too complicated. I guess for people looking for any changes from the original, it's still kind of lackluster from the standpoint where it, it promises an interesting premise, but can't really deliver. Chant did like the monster designs. Yeah, it feels just kind of like an unpolished. It feels like a, like a, here's a concept of what the hair will look like. And then, like, it's literally a solid blob instead of having, like, defined hairs or, like, shading or anything else really super applied to it in a way. It, it feels like it's, like, one stage too early in development. And I think, too, the price. Like, this game is not, like, super high caliber. I can't imagine people that paid, like, $60 when this game came out. Like, there is, there is no way this is, like, a $60 game. It feels like a budget game. Like, just through and through, both from the presentation, the quality of the voice acting, and the length of the game. I would be very annoyed if I paid, like, full price at the time this released. I, I'm, I'm even kind of iffy on, like, 25 Like, maybe it was worth it for 25 Like, half of the release price? Maybe? I don't know. I think from that standpoint, you know, I think I had more fun clipping out of bounds than I did playing the game itself, sadly. I did like the concepts. I did want to get into it. I do think they fixed some of the uh, menus because menus were horrific in the SNES version, in particular when swapping equipment. So they did like good things there. But then like they botched really basic things. Oh, here's the easy one that I forgot. The day night cycle. So like, why did they think it was OK to just randomly interrupt you while walking around in dungeons and towns? fade to black, tell you the day is updating, and then give you control. This happened, I think, I don't know, how many times, chat, did I get interrupted while platforming? At, at least 30 times between the two playthroughs. Maybe 40? Somewhere between 30 and 40. Especially when I was at the Mana Sanctuary. Oh my gosh, I was getting so tilted jumping between things, and it would just kill my moment. It's not even like it... It's not even like it pauses you and resumes. You just drop like a rock. And so, like, if you're in, like, the icy caverns or you're doing a jump in between other things, like you're trying to get over a poison pit in, like, the marshes or you're trying to get past flame pillars in the volcano, it is really damn rude of the game to just take control away from you. That was probably one of the more annoying mechanics that it, it did drive me wild because it kept happening and it happened very frequently. And I think it's kind of embarrassing because the SNES version had such a smooth day-night cycle that it's embarrassing that a game in 2020 replicating it cannot do the same thing where they had beautiful pixelated you know day night all the way through it transitioned seamlessly into night there weren't annoying pop-ups it didn't like make everything black and then reload the graphics like it was just done so much better in the snes version and it's kind of embarrassing i would say they don't really have a reason for this. This has been done in decades of games before this. Even the game in it that it's taking part or replacing by doing it as an HD remake equivalency kind of thing. Just not good enough. Uh, one other thing I did not like were the physics in this game. Oh my gosh, there is so much jank in the physics. I mean, to me, it's going to impact me more because I was doing a lot of stuff out of bounds. But oh my gosh, there are so many stupid times where like you'll bonk your head or you'll see like a very low railing overlooking a giant area you could walk in and the game will just invisible wall you and it will not just invisible wall you you'll like bonk on things you can't see or you'll bounce off of things so like you'll eat your jump height will just get eaten randomly depending on how close to a wall you are or if the game will just be like, nah, you were trying to land on a small platform, let's slide you off. Yeah. 
I, I don't know why they implemented that because it's it's wall rising. You could just go in random directions. We had a couple points in the playthrough where we were just kind of jumping against things and we did like a jump attack and it flipped our direction because we hit some magic spot in the wall. Like there there was some weird jank with the physics. I'm like, how does holding forward and jump attacking result in going backwards? In any universe, I don't understand. So there, there is some real weirdness with the physics. You plummet like a rock. I do like that you could do air attacks to extend it, but then when you do that, you don't really mo maintain a lot of momentum. Your character kind of feels like... He feels kind of... I guess they're kind of heavy. They're, they're very slow to accelerate. Potentially, and they also do, but but then they decelerate fast too. I don't know. It's hard to describe, I guess, perfectly the physics there in that sense. But that can lead to some really awkward moments where, like, if you don't get like a step in your run, oh, <laughs> minor annoyance. The fact that something called constant dash does not mean that dash is on all the time drives me wild. Why is it when I have to load the game, I have to press the dash button again to dash? when it's called oh, constant dash. It's not constant dash if I've hit the damn dash button. Don't call it that. <laughs> Stop it. Just have it on by default. Why is that not a thing? Why even allow me to toggle that off if constant dash is on? Craziness. And some of the some of the menus in this game also did annoy me quite a bit. I think my favorite one was when I was loading a game. I select a file, then it asks me if I want to load the file, and it defaults to no. Then it asks me again if I'm sure I want to load the file, and I'm like, are you serious? So the menus are still not perfect. There's definitely like moments where I'm like, why? Like <laughs> we're going through these things. Like why give me this prompt? I don't I don't understand. Please, you're killing me. Uh, I guess more in the positive side, they have auto saves. Downside, you can't really rearrange the saves very well. Not all games have that, I just figured I'd mention that, especially if you're looking to do multiple playthroughs. Um, they have like a new game plus mechanic. I, I, have, I have no interest in trying it out, so I, I don't have any opinion towards that. Anything chat want to add that I forgot about before we go into deep spoilers and we talk about some of the absolutely hilariously terrible plot decisions and or characters and or bosses in more detail? I think for me it's a very mixed bag. I would say if you got the game very cheap, maybe it would be worth exploring. Maybe that'll perk interest. I did see and I kind of agree with a lot of people that uh, if I had tried a demo for the game, I probably would not have bought the game since I was not a big fan of the combat system. It's just a little too basic. And I think sadly one of the negatives is that as you get more class strike stuff, it kind of also invalidates the combo system. Like there were certain characters where like the four square, like four light attack, power attack combo literally invalidated any reason to do any other combo ever. So it's just kind of like whatever. Oh, actually, that, that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. So one of the nice things that they did is they let you see that you can visit their backstory, which isn't something you could do in the SNES. So you could play it out as though you had made them the main character. The downside, none of the items you pick up matter, which is like, why did they do that? Why let me play through their backstory, but then I XP and items don't matter? Why? Just, there are just weird choices in there. So yeah, I, I guess from that standpoint, I don't really have anything else that goes into uh, non-spoiler territory. So let's talk about spoilers. Chat, who, who is your least favorite character? There were six protagonists, which we didn't go into, I guess we didn't go into detail in the non-spoiler, but that's fine. But from the standpoint of the spoilers category, going over each of the characters, Durin was kind of bland. Angela was one of the most unlikable characters. Um, people were very split and torn on Charlotte, the little girl. Mostly from her voice acting. Honestly, it did really bother me. I've heard worse voice acting. It was definitely like she was doing baby talk on purpose. Some people that drives them wild. I'm like, I've heard worse. Um, Hawkeye was fine, aka Hot Guy, because the way he said his name one time. Uh, Kevin, 
one of the most confusing line redirections to take him ever. I don't feel like his voice fit for the voice for the character. And I think the worst voice actress was probably Reese. Yeah, she her lines were all over the place. Well, I I want to know what her line directions were. Like they were hilariously terrible. <laughs> like I genuinely had no idea what they were doing with some of those. Like I think they told her like mimic Starfire from uh, Teen Titans, and then other times she just reads the line ultra flat. And it was it's very jarring. It felt like she was voicing two different characters, but it was the same character. It didn't feel like a inappropriate emotional range for the character. Like it's one thing for you to be like subdued or like joking and then doing other things. Yeah, it was just like, ooh. It's funny that Dango said that. No, some people actually said they weren't gonna watch the Charlotte playthrough. So it's not, it wasn't just memes. That was real. People people did actually refuse to tune in for it. So Reese was a disappointment. Yeah. Yeah, Durin was whatever. Yeah, Angela, oh, her her dialogue and the obnoxious voice with it was painful. I mean, she voice acted an obnoxious character very well, so technically that succeeded. Um, I think we can all agree everybody's favorite terrible ending was Kevin's. No contest, worst ending of the game, hilariously stupid. The, I almost recommend people to play that quest just to witness how stupid that ending is. <laughs> It's like, it was like, it was, it was like, it takes dumb actions to like a whole new level. I don't even know if I want to spoil it in the spoiler section. It was so bad. <laughs> I, I think I remember going, what? <laughs> yeah, I love that like almost everybody got slapped. Oh, I forgot to mention something in the, in the non-spoiler section, but whatever, we'll mention it here. So they did take away the ability to like solve puzzles. The game kind of auto-completes some of the stuff. So for example, uh, you used to be able to have to choose elementals to deal with puzzles. That's gone. It just happens automatically now. I, I guess that's more of a mixed bag thing comparatively. I don't think it really adds anything to the gameplay per se, but just be aware they strip that. Oh man, those voice, oh, I for... chat, I forgot to talk about this, but this more spoiler section anyway. The, uh, what was his name? Ghost Dad and uh, b -b 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 Haunted Pirate Ship Guy. What were they thinking with those voice filters? Holy F. <laughs> oh my gosh, they were so bad. That was like comical. Like, did they have an intern do those filters? Why did they think that was appropriate? <laughs> I, how am I supposed to take it seriously when they're like, <laughs> like that's what the filter did to their voices. <laughs> Mattello, Mattello, thank you. What it was <laughs> like, it was so horrible. Like you, you like, how did, how did that pass any quality testing? How, who heard that and went, yup. I want like goofy space ghost as like my main voice, not something sinister or spooky in the spooky music level, the haunted ship. Holy, <laughs> should I give it to Angela? Oh my gosh, the game would actually be unlistenable. If they put that on more characters, oh no, you need that filter for fun later. Oh man, that filter is atrocious. Like it, it, it actively took me out of the game. That was that was one of the lowlights of the game. It, it arguably goes into the so bad it's good, but it is just genuinely an embarrassing mistake for a allegedly very seasoned game company to do. Like that's bad, even from like an indie game perspective. I don't think people would do that on purpose. Like it's truly phenomenal that that made it into a final game. It filters the audience, something like that. So yeah, they, they should be embarrassed. That was extremely terrible. Got excited when we got there. <laughs> poor Durant. Oh man, poor Durant and company when they had to do deal with that. I think we did get Charlotte with the ghost filter voice briefly. I think so, right? Because she becomes ghostified, so they apply the filter to her. I think that did actually happen. I think Chat tuned that out. Remember when she died? She did speak like five lines. Yeah, we did get go, Charlotte. Can we look it up listening to the other characters? Oh no. I don't know about that. It's truly, truly horrendous. I, I don't think I can allow that as a stream emote. That is just so distractingly terrible. 
I'll maybe think about Salamando. I'll, I'll have to replay the game on beginner or something for chat for Salamando. I'll go back for the Grarg. One of the one of the worst voice acted lines. That that was hashtag one of the worst voice acting lines I have ever heard. Yeah, the Grog. The Grog was terrible. So if you missed that, we'll be adding that, I think. I'll, I'll be playing, I think, tomorrow on Beginner. So unfortunately, it means playing the game one more time off stream, no matter what. I, I have to get back up to Grog. So wish me luck when I go to do that, Chad. But I think from that standpoint... I don't know. I mean, I guess from the plot standpoint, they have, like, all these big factions moving at once. And you get to have, like, a, a, a certain association with one of three bosses that is dependent on the main character that you choose. And I think from that standpoint, it's interesting up until the point you reach the Mana Sanctuary. And they're like, oh, no, we've been following the villain's plan all along. Oh, we're so stupid. We opened the way to the place they want to go. And then, like, every single story is resolved with, I lost off screen. Trust me. Bye. Like, that, that felt really lame. If they were ever going to rewrite any part of that story, they should have at least let you witness the fight between them or something. It, it was like, wow, I went out of this way because Heath has been taken over, and, you know, he's this really important figure. Oh, they let him go somewhere, and he's now lost? Oh, well, I guess I'm not going to follow up on that, because I'm not the main character. I'm one of the two side characters you chose. That, that part of the game was very weak in the main story. I think that was probably the worst part of the main story. Aside from the insane backtracking of going to every dungeon. That, the game has an insane backtrack. I think you go back to one location like four or five times. Just between needing to get the Benevidons the first time you get there. Going back to the king. Going to like three dungeons deep just to be told that you now have some stupid thing in the shrinking village that will tell you to use the thing that you should have probably figured out to put to sleep the other en enemy army. You know, just casual things, chat. You're just like, really? We're doing this? <laughs> but anyway. As I said before, the plot is not the strong suit of the game. The combat was not for me. And sadly, the combat is a lot of it. I guess I'll praise them that they let you skip the cutscenes, because they are really slow-paced. Really awkward static shots. They're not really interesting for the most part. Like, compare, like, the care of, like, Grand Stream Saga, for example, on the PS1 as a random example, where even if the game was, like, really early 3D jank, the care into the cinematography of the scene is so much better in that game compared to this one. And I think that's a really good example to really show how jarring it is that I think PS1 games on the cusp of 3D had m such strong camera work compared to the lazy kind of garbage, honestly, that was in Trials of Mana. Pace would be much faster. The characters talk naturally instead of talk taking weird pa pauses. Yeah, I agree. Like, think of it this way. Like, the scene where in Grandstream Saga, where the armor comes to life and you see the point of view of the armor creeping forward towards the protagonist, that put more heart and care than, like, every other cutscene in that game. Everything else was just kind of like a, either a static shot or a very slow panning shot. I guess the closest it comes to that is when Fairy gets kidnapped, which also actually is probably tied for one of the stupidest plot points in the game, where somehow three people are there, none of them see the person get captured, and neither do you as the viewer, and she just gets kidnapped off screen. That's probably the closest to interesting camera work in the entirety of the game, and it sets up for an incredibly stupid plot point. So take it as take it as you will, I guess. Well, anyway, chat, I don't think I really have too much else to say. Grand Street Cinematography was great. It was not the characters of mannequins in that game. Exactly. Yeah, see, they know what they were doing. It felt like you were actually watching the equivalency of like a film. Like just the, the different angles, the zooms. It was just such a lively presentation compared to this game. It felt like Again, it felt like a bunch of like a B team or a C team worked on the game. I'm just going to be frank with it. That's how it comes off. So maybe some people like that appeal in the game itself. But it feels very cheap to me between like the graphics. The music is like stellar. The, the music earned maybe the money for the game itself. How were the mannequins more lively than the actual character models? Exactly. They're just kind of like super stiff in this game. And 
You know, they didn't do a lot of poses despite being way more advanced than a PS1 game. Just kind of, eh. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, the voice break of uh, Belladonna <laughs> when, when, she, when, her, when the Dark Lord dies. That line is that line is also unintentionally very funny. I will say that's one of my favorite parts of the game. <laughs> I don't remember what word it is that she says, but she's like, she's like, Kill! like she just kind of like, she just like extends it for no reason while being like really, while also being like really flat with the delivery. Again, there's a lot of unintentional comedy, so maybe people will like it from like a cheesy standpoint versus like a serious game. If you're looking for like a serious RPG with like good plot or like re revolutionary things you will not get it in this game so a bit unfortunate there i think if i were to give if i were to give very fair changes if if i were ever to try something in the series again to get my interest one they need to fix air combat either skills or air dashes or double jump or something to make air combat actually worth doing outside of I will bonk an enemy down and it's very boring. Um, two, probably don't invalidate your combo system by introducing new combos that are just straight up better than the other ones. They should extend it kind of like if you do like three light attacks into power, they should add more power attacks to those combos. So that way it rewards you for remembering the basics and just expanding on it there. So if you're not going to add another attack button, they should have extended the power attacks themselves over that. And they should have also considered power attack combos, where if you start with power attacks, you could also make light attack combos from that. That might be a bit too complicated, but from the standpoint of adding more power attacks, I think that would have worked better, to be honest with you. And it would have been the same number of animations, potentially. Um, I think the ability to turn off spells would have gone a long way. This is a basic thing that has been there since... I don't know, 1999 maybe? Whatever, whatever year Tales of Destiny came out, chat. <laughs> it has been in the Namco series for literally 20-something years. They have always allowed you to turn off techniques since Tales of Destiny forward, so that way you don't have AI wasting their time on lesser abilities. I think being able to designate what percentage of health they specifically use healing spells would have been nice, and I think also potentially banning them from certain items would have been appreciated. So something more akin to like a Valkyrie profile auto item where I'm saying, you can use X of these items, these are the items I use to heal or do between turns. And that felt a lot better. But I think from the standpoint, you know, then you don't have to worry about enemy weakness as much if you just literally turn off the bad spells. But yeah, I think what really kind of dragged the game down with combat is that if you had some basic terrible holy bolt, they will do that instead of like the godly lucent beam or doppelganger or sometimes even enemy weakness. So it just kind of got annoying to see them spam really cheap spells instead of just ending the encounter because it costs virtually the same MP and one of them's clearly better than the other by like miles. So again, more control so that way less is involved with the AI. And I think being able to have them either... I don't know like what you could do without adding another mechanic. Like I was thinking about like if dodge roll is your only mechanic, you don't have a lot of levers for the AI to work properly. So what I mean by that is like they either become dodge gods or they become like sandbag dummies, which is what they were in this game. So without introducing like a parry system or AI takes reduced damage, or like a guard button or something like that. I don't see what they could really do to fix the AI from dying. Like, I guess the easy way out is just make AI take less damage. They did that in some of the East games. Again, they should probably be looking at East on how to do a really fun, fast, tight action game with not necessarily the best plot in the world. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of things they could have done there. And even just like the number of items that they can use, like, why were the options never 3, 5, and like, and like 8 or something? Why, why isn't that a slider from 0 to 9? Or why, why can't, yeah, why, why was that not just full control there? There's just like a lot of weird options in there. Oh, please let dash always be constant. Like, there's just a lot of small things that would have been like towards the quality of life. 
definitely remove the bonking with the physics that drove me wild in a couple areas. Don't make day-night cycles stop you mid-air in platforming. That was so obnoxious. Um, technically, day-night cycle had an impact on spell damage, but I'm going to be real with you. It wasn't important in the SNES game. It's not important in this game. It, it technically helps. So I guess every time, chat, we go to sleep, we technically could boost light damage if we do it during daytime. Technically. It doesn't really matter. But anyway. I mean, these are just like off-the-cuff ideas that we talked about uh, kind of through the stream and even just like in this final thoughts itself. We're just like five minutes of thought will lead to a much stronger game overall, and I would have had a lot more fun with it. Um... Yeah, I mean, just think about it, especially if you start comparing it to East in particular, which I think is pretty much its competitor title, which I would recommend almost every East game over this, to be honest. And they're also cheaper, spoilers. Um, without having the equivalency of, like, Flash Guard or Flash Move, which is, like, perfect timing dodge to potentially slow-mo, it didn't feel as rewarding, even, comparatively. Like, even older games like Senkoku Basara were really, really tight with the combat. So kind of going for something that is potentially very mechanically complex, like one of those games, to this one, feels kind of disappointing. And I get kind of like the same feeling. I, I compared it to Nino Kuni a couple times, where the AI is just like really basic and there's only a single tumble. Um, maybe add some iframes on the tumble, because getting hit mid-tumble is really stupid. If they have iframes, I don't think I've ever seen them kick in. It's just one of those things where I've definitely been hit like in the middle of a roll and towards the end of the roll, and the fact that it's not even like partially invincible is kind of obnoxious on certain spells and abilities. I definitely wish there was a way to get AI to target faster the right things. Like, for example, in the SNES version, you can tell them with the... T you had like a target icon. I don't think that existed in this game where you could force them to fight a specific target, but that was a thing in the SNES version which was missing. Um, I don't like that when you're in combat, you're forced to walk slow instead of doing your normal movement speed. So a lot, before you got like the cactus, it got really annoying to escape encounters because you just move at like half speed for no reason. And eventually they mostly fix that, but it's like, it still feels really bad for like 60% of the game. So these are just like little small things. Um, I think most of the attack indicators were fine. I guess I could technically leave it in the next one. What are some other minor gripes that would just be like really easy fixes that I wish were in this game? Oh, the ability to assign commands on the quick bar. I wish they also took another book from Namco's flagship series, Tales of Destiny, uh, onwards, Tales, whatever, of uh, being able to assign ally commands to a simple button without pausing the game. I don't know why that wasn't a thing. That was just an easy thing to do. If it existed, I didn't see it when I was going in there. We could assign our own abilities to a quick menu. So for example, if I don't want to pause the game and menu to Lucent Beam over and over, I technically can assign it there. I actually like pausing the game with certain abilities, but not others, because I want to make sure I'm targeting the right thing. So for offensive spells, I'm not sure I love that per se, but there's also a lot of times when we're just fighting like one single boss and it's like, man, that would have been nice if I could have just held the right button down and did attack buttons to force, you know, like Charlotte and Angela to spell spam without me pausing the game. Like that's where I would have used it. And I don't really want to assign items there because again, I'm usually targeting multiple people or targeting one person out of multiple with most of the items. If it's something like an AoE heal, I guess it makes sense to put there, or something that applies to everybody. But there's so many single target abilities in this game that I barely use that feature at all. So I'm hoping that if it does return and they don't replace that with another combat ability, like another combat button for attack, for example, um, I really hope that they at least allow you to assign abilities there, because that would make the combat a lot more fun to me, where I can kind of weave my combo and then kind of have like a good rhythm going with characters. And again, like, this is without, like, doing any super drastic changes to the game. Like, my my appreciation of the game would have gone up by, like, double. It would have been, instead of, like, a leaning towards probably pass, especially over East games, to it's good enough. And again, it just, it just needed another pass from, like, seasoned developers. And I just didn't get that feel. So that was my experience. Just playing the game briefly. 
I played many, many, many action games like this. They've done it better for the most part. The game feels overpriced. Graphics are kind of on the cheap end. Music fantastic. Combat, not worth the price of admission for me. But maybe for you, you saw some stuff in the playthrough that interests you. And by all means, give it a shot. I'd recommend probably trying the demo before you do any combat. But I would state from that standpoint, I will probably not go back to this game except to grab very cheesy sound clips. So from that standpoint, chat, I don't think I have anything else to say with the final thoughts. So if you have anything you want to add to YouTube, uh, by all means. I do feel like... They had a lot of missed opportunities. They had some good ideas to fix some of the SNES issues. I'm glad stats are working now. I'm glad crit applies more. I'm glad there are like crit builds in this game. But yeah, not quite there. Exactly, Blue Donna. Thank you, Blue Donna, for telling us the day night cycle grog. I wonder who Blue Donna is mimicking in that particular one. Thank you, Blue Donna. It could be anybody. <laughs> Thanks, Blue Donna. Oh, man. It's just one of those things, chat. I don't know. Is there anything? I'm just trying to think, is there even just one additional thing that I forgot? Oh, I like that it tells you the weaknesses for the most part of the enemies and if they absorb. So you don't have to, like, scan each individual enemy. I think it's a missed opportunity to not have an enemy encyclopedia. I don't remember seeing that in the game if it existed. I don't know what menu it was in if it existed. So that would have been kind of nice to just say you killed every enemy and complete the little enemy encyclopedia. That feels like a very small feature that I'm sure a lot of people would have appreciated. But I think that's it, Chad. I don't have too much else to say. Yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't like the craziest fun game to go out of bounds. Oh, actually, you know what? If if I have to play something like this again, please let me save anywhere and don't you save statues. <laughs> It would save me so much time breaking this game. So yeah, the fact that like if I mess up one of those tricks, I can't just save on the spot like an ease. It feels really brutal. I don't mind statues are the only place you get full heal, and that's fine. You know, those kinds of things like a full refill. Oh, actually, there's one more comment I'll make. What was going on with the jars in the game? They added jars so that way they can make like the journey a little easier compared to the SNES. So there's like healing jars, magic jars, class strike gauge jars. And like for the most part, they were fine, except for the ice dungeon. Like, what were they thinking putting the healing jar 15 steps from the full heal with no encounters in between? But what was the point of those, chat? I feel like I feel like they just accidentally copy pasted the wrong assets in there. Like that should have been a class strike jar, I think. And then in the bonus dungeon with Angela, there's just two healing jars right next to the save statue, of which there are no other fights there other than the boss. And it's like, but why? Why did they do that? I don't, I don't understand. I'm so sad, chat. Yeah, actually, you know what was a missed opportunity from class strikes that I just thought of that would have made the classes a lot better? If they were going to enhance the abilities, I would have loved more charge levels on the charge attack. Like, it would have been nice if it, it's like very risky because you're holding it down to be able to do either a lot of damage while the boss is stunned or to potentially instantly break the shield with like a second level charge or something. Like these are, again, these are just very basic things I'm just kind of thinking of off the cuff that would have made the game a bit more interesting to me. So you would have had like a go-to slightly riskier guard break move that you could charge up potentially before combat and you can kind of weigh the options in those things and it's not like your go-to combo versus bosses kind of thing. I don't know, chat. Chance also saying, gonna assume it was left over from an earlier build and they added the statue or something, kind of like those invisible rocks. Yeah, there were some weird terrain artifacts where they accidentally forgot to remove them. So I think they put like the same terrain as like Mana Sanctuary 1 has some of the rocks that exist in Mana Sanctuary 2, but they forgot they removed the rocks in the early version of the stage, but they're still there and you can stand on them. I think they genuinely forgot copy-pasting the model. Like, these are the kinds of things where, like, I feel like it's super sloppy. 
and it's like we're not going really hard out of our way to like test some like obscure wall like we just generally walked back and forth between the level between the uh main path and where an item is and we hit it so it's not even like they were that hard to find kind of thing and those existed in a couple places. I'm also kind of sad they didn't just let you go up the wrong way in the sand area. Like, was it really necessary to add, like, hypergravity to stop you from going up the, the, like, the downhill stuff? I mean, we still clipped out of bounds a couple times anyway, despite what the game wanted. But, like, was that really necessary to add, like, to spend development time to stop players from going that way? Like, would it have really broken the game to come in through the exit, given that you still have to fight the boss anyway? And even then, it's not even a shortcut in most scenarios. It's just a different way to get there. Because it's not like one of them will just instantly take you to the boss. You still have to go through several rooms anyway. I don't know, chat. It's just one of those things where I'm like, they kind of put some of the development in the wrong end, sadly. So, unfortunately, chat, I think that comes to the end of Trials of Mana. So, with that, I guess we're going to say goodbye to YouTube. So, thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully see you again in the next Mana game. Where chat will definitely love Little Cactus... And they definitely didn't think he was creepy in the 3D version at all.